Live from Soho, New York, it's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Welcome to Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. I'm Becky Stern. With me is Phil. We're here to celebrate Wearable Electronics. Phil, what's on today's show? On today's show, Becky, we have Wearable Wednesday, a tour of all the things on the Adafruit site, blog, and world of wearable electronics. We have Component of the Week. That is something amazing in the world of wearable electronics that you'll be explaining and showing and sharing. We have Material Spotlight, a weird, freaky material so you can get your wearable on. Freaky! <laughs> That's electrifying. <laughs> we'll answer your questions, and we're going to have a giveaway, Becky. All that and more on Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Yay! Okay. All right, let's start. We have a long show. I mean, we have a lot to cover, so we should just dive right in. Today's Wearable Wednesday. Every yeah. Wearable Wednesday on the Adafruit blog, we post up all kinds of fun wearables projects, and I wanted to share just a couple with you yeah. that we uh, posted uh, this past week or today. Yeah. Uh, so first is um, a customer sent in this awesome project. It's a uh, Space Defender bow tie built with Flora. So he was tired of those close talkers, you know, come yeah. up and Space Invaders, space as you invaders. call them. Yeah, that's true. And um, he wanted to keep people at a safe distance, so he used a, um, what is that, one of those Maxbotics distance sensors and Flora yeah. and some 3D printing even. And so whenever someone gets too close to him, the red lights turn on. Yeah, this has all the makings of like the ultimate project because it has electronics, it has 3D printing. Has wearables, has LEDs, and has, has everything, a, and has a fun story. So this is available on Instructables and in the show notes, right? Yes. Oh yeah. All of the links for today's show are in the um, description below. So if you're wondering what we're talking about, find it in the show notes. Um, you yeah. click on the Wearable Wednesday link, and you'll see all of um, the yeah. Wearable Wednesday posts, including the lovely Space Defender bow tie. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We have to pay some bills. Oh, yeah. So every week we also have a discount code for you to buy some uh, wearables or flora related items. And the discount code this week is LED Ribbon. It expires tonight at 11.59 Eastern Time. So get your orders in by midnight. You'll get 10% off anything in the wearables or flora categories with discount code LED Ribbon. Yeah, all on word, LED Ribbon. All right, let's keep moving. Um, this one, Glaze Conference. Yes, we're a media sponsor for the Glaze Conference in where is it? in San Francisco, San Francisco. right? And yep. it's all about um, wearable tech with like Google Glass and smartwatches. So I think it's about just exploring the possibilities of these new interfaces, right? With yeah. screens and screens strapped to us. We've um, covered some of the big investor moves in the wearable space. So uh, there's these trends, you know, before it was uh, like wireless things, uh, Nest, for instance, another one was 3D printing, so like MakerBot, you know, funding goes that way. Now it's wearables, so you have traditional players like Nike and Fitbit and Fuel Gauge, like all these things together. And this is kind of the next thing after that, which is what are startups doing? And are there startups that are building around Google Glass, startups building around all the smart watches that are supposedly coming out? So mm -hmm. Apple's maybe working on a watch, Samsung's working on a watch. So these are folks, I think, that are used to doing app development. But they look at hardware as the next frontier, and wearable frontier. Uh, the wearables is the next frontier. It's very interesting when you yeah. um, talk about uh, hardware startups or software startups uh, considering these new interfaces. So I find it um, it's like uniquely challenging, but it's also so interesting. You're not just developing like another thing for people to use at their computer, which is already at such a yeah. known interface. You're actually developing like, breaking completely outside of that, and I mean that means that the risks are greater, but also the rewards could be. Greater. Yeah, like when we develop a site or something like that here or at Adafruit, we're thinking about our shopping cart. We're like, well, what is the maximum amount of size the screen is going to be? When you do wearables, it's like, well, like, what's the maximum size of the universe <laughs> or like planet Earth? Because you have to think about the whole spectrum of things. Like, is, are they going to go outside ever? Glare? Are they going to go underwater? Are sure. they going to take it off? Does it need to? Be, how often does it need to be recharged? You know, most people don't design websites, not all the time, but sometimes, thinking about how much power it consumes when sometimes. you're, when you you're looking at the like site. Sometimes, you see those like black, right? There's yeah. like a browser plugin that'll turn yeah. everything, whatever. Yeah, you make your browser, your screen use slightly yeah. less power for super yeah. eco-friendly. Anyway, so the conference is cool. If you're um, interested, you should check it out. The, it's on the blog, and um, it's in the Bay Area. Yep. All right, September. next up. What is this? Okay, this is an update from one of our Element 14 Get Closer Challenge participants from Leslie. Um, they've been tearing it up over there on the Element 14 site. So the um, there the participants, there's eight of them. In case you aren't following along, that have been chosen and given some flora supplies to make uh, a project that they proposed. 
and uh, document it along as they go on the Element 14 Arduino community. And there's a link in the description. You can check out all of the posts they've been doing. And um, they've been doing really cool stuff, like posting video updates and unboxing and like design diagrams. And I've been chiming in with some, like, you know, here, go here to find, oh, it sounds like that code's already been written. Yeah. So um, it's really fun. And they've been writing in the Adafruit forums, too. So um, Leslie is working on an um, LED umbrella that she wants to make. And um, she recorded a really cute, adorable video that I wanted to show you guys about our NeoPixel strip. Yeah, the enthusiasm will come through the screen. Get ready. Hey, this is Leslie. You see this empty reel? This is from the Adafruit NeoPixel LED strip 30. This is exciting stuff, okay? And you are about to witness what I just got to see, which is crazy lights. Are you ready? Woohoo! I'm loving it. I had no idea if this battery is going to work, and it totally is running perfectly well. You can notice that I actually uncoiled these lights so they wouldn't be in a circular pattern because I heard that electricity does not like that, and they are just awesome. I mean, this is killing me. And are you thinking what I'm thinking? This is so exciting. All right, so what I'm thinking is quadcopter you put a strip of led lights around it and now you got close encounters of the third kind boo, 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 boo. love it okay i love how her whole room is lit up by that strip like yeah. you get this giant cast of colors it's so nice to see updates like that and bill shaw has an update too about using the flora gps and it's really fun for me to watch i mean yeah these participants because they've been awarded with the supplies to make their projects. They yeah. have to blog it every week, which which is yeah. great for me because I mean like project documentation, not everybody's driven to do it as, as um, regularly as we should maybe. And for yeah. me, it's really nice to see folks with the floor hardware in their hands actually experiencing the tutorials. And like Bill kind of did his live where he was like, okay, now I'm gonna hook up the GPS. And he like does it and he downloads the thing yeah. and he's like, yeah, I have a signal. It's really fun to see. I mean, cause you know, we have our own experience of making stuff, but it's different to see it out in the world. And yeah, it's really fun. It's interesting the the, what folks don't see is how the process that we go through to, to, to get the documentation in a spot where people can actually just follow it step by step. Yeah. And so behind the scenes, if, you know, you, if someone's making a live video of them making electronics, um, that probably means the tutorial that we worked on um, may have taken 10 or 15 hours so that someone could put it together if they just follow it step by step. So yeah. it's, it's, it's always like, oh my god, you know, they're, they're doing Is it going to be OK? Yeah. Is it going to get snagged? Yeah. Oh, no, he did it. Yay! Like, it. Yeah. yeah, so that's great. So I mean, uh, in addition to the successes, of course, also the challenges so we can, because we always want to make our documentation better. If like a bunch yeah. of people are getting hung up on a thing, we always go in and fix it. Um, so I've been really enjoying seeing the challengers work on their projects. And if you want to follow along, you can look at the link there. Lots building stuff on live video is a new unboxing. Unboxing is being consumer. Building stuff, yeah. that's where it's at. <laughs> okay, and uh, we do have our Wearable Wednesday video. Oh yeah, we're going to debut this week's uh, Wearable Wednesday project, and then lead in, which leads directly into the component of the week. So I don't want to spoil it. We can just roll okay. it. Okay, here we go. Roll Here's the clip. Here's an easy project to put some spring in your step. Use LED ribbon from Adafruit to adorn any pair of shoes. Start by stitching the battery pack in a safe place. These ballet flats from Adidas take the battery packs under their wings. Use E6000 or a similar glue to affix the ribbon around the edges. And we used painter's tape to hold everything in place while it dries. If your shoe doesn't use a whole spool of LED ribbon, it's simple to connect another battery pack to what's left over. Just slide open the case and remove the white button. You'll notice the ribbon has exposed contacts every inch or so. Trim your ribbon so one set of contacts is very close to the end. Lift the little lever and insert the raw end of the ribbon underneath it so it lines up with the electrical contacts inside. It will only work one way, with the LEDs facing away from the control switch. But you can't damage it by plugging it in backwards. So if it doesn't work the first time, try flipping it over. Try your wings at this project and see if the shoe fits. Once you've got your foot in the door of wearable electronics, you may be hooked. Subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube and don't miss our weekly live show about wearable electronics with me, Becky Stern. All right, and there it is. So that's week, this week's project. Yeah. It's really fun and it leads right into component of the week. This week's component of the week is our LED ribbon, which you just saw in this week's project. 
So it's this lovely, fle super flexible um, cloth polyester ribbon with LEDs all along it. And then we have some closer up photos too. Yeah. It's advice. got this tiny little battery pack that when you click it, it goes through a couple different animation modes. Um, so you have full on, then like epileptic blink, then slightly less epileptic blink, then a slow fade, and then an even slower fade before it goes to off. So you have different options. It's a really easy way to craftily add um, LEDs to your shoes, your Halloween costume, your kid's backpack. Um, it's really easy to work with because you don't need to solder. All you need to do is either glue it on or sew it on. And we have this extra little battery pack. So what we did with the shoes um, is you can see we didn't use a whole spool on each shoe. This is the leftover and you can cut it off and then um, uh, as you saw in the video, you can reconnect it to another battery box. So that makes it so that you're not wasting any ribbon, uh, and you can tailor it to fit your um, your project. Yeah. And these shoes that you got, they're special wing shoes from Adidas. Uh, Adidas. That's yeah, cool. they're like special edition. You know, like the Jeremy Scott winged sneakers. These are like the lady ballet flat version, and they were yeah, they were hard to find. They're like not available. I wanted them in black, but. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so. Cool. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe I can show you on the, on the overhead real yeah, quick. Yeah, let's go to the overhead. To the overhead. I'm going to turn on this light. Is that what yeah, happens? Yeah, you can do that if you need an extra little bit of light there. If you want to focus Hopefully it up, you might have to move your, your hand around Focus, there. focus. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really easy, like, to reconnect the box. Super fun. And um, so, like, as you saw in the video, like, that is the whole project. There's no programming. There's no soldering. Um, it's really easy to use. So if you're looking for a wearables project to start out with your kids or um, like a, a workshop, this would be great. It would really uh, go really well on a hoodie. We have it in one meter, one and a half meter long spools, and also um, shorter spools and then or shorter reels, and then this extra battery box. Okay, great. And it's also this week's code is LED ribbon. So That's if you would right. like to pick up some of this LED ribbon, it's 10% off everything in the wearables and flora categories on the adafruit.com shopping cart. Add some and check out with code LED ribbon for 10% off. That's great. Okay, moving right along. We have material spotlight. Ooh. Yeah, this spotlight. is my favorite. This is my favorite part of the show all these weeks we've been doing it. We're up to <laughs> episode three. But I like this because it's, a, it's, it's always something new and unique that um, I know for sure uh, no one's talked about this on video, what it does, what it is. Right. This is all new, all very new stuff. This is it. Yeah. Conductive fabric. Yeah. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about all three different kinds of conductive fabric that we sell. A conductive handkerchief. Here at Adafruit. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I guess we'll just start with yeah. the, what I do we have? Yeah, here. this is the, so we sell them three different kinds. This is the shiny, maybe you can go between the picture and the overhead so people can yeah, see we'll Photo Studio, then immediately the live sample. So this is our knit, um, shiny silver conductive fabric. Is that this one? Is yeah, that that's the one you, yeah, yeah, that's okay, the one you just showed. And then okay. so you can move on to the next one, which is the woven conductive fabric. It's a little more um, gotcha. stiff, and it's actually like a, a plated. Got a little focus, 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 focus. Got a little thing going on there. It would make an excellent tinfoil hat. Yeah, there it goes. It's gonna get it. Yeah. And then um, the last one that we is relatively new is this um, conductive knit jersey. So it's it's knit like the um, like the first one we showed, but it's a little bit more stretchy and it's not shiny. It's a matte color. It looks uh, it looks like a t -sh like t-shirt fabric. That's what we mean by jersey. And um, it rolls at the edges because it's a uh, a knit fabric. So I guess I wanted to show you with the multimeter that they are actually conductive, um, and they're but they have non-trivial resistance and they're all made out of silver. So um, that means, and we've talked about this when we talked about conductive thread, that um, silver things tarnish eventually, which means that you're you know like you things could become more resistive or less less conductive over time as they oxidize. And I mean that's a concern, but it's also really fun to play with. So you can see here. Can you see the screen of my multimeter? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So it, that's about it's like eighty ohms or something. And they're they're dip, this knit one should be the same resistance anywhere along it, and that's just because like knit fabrics go like this, and then the thread backs up over on itself, and it's like one continuous thread the whole way through. Um, and this woven one should be the same resistance no matter how you measure it anyway also because it's like a nylon or a, 
or um, polyester that's been plated on the outside. And so this is also like 80 ohms for the distance that I'm measuring here, which is what, like five inches or so? Yeah. And it's the same anywhere you do it. And then also the shiny one. So like the, the conductive fabric um, we carry, it's, it's, a lot of it is an aesthetic decision and what you want to use for your projects because they're all about the same resistance. And uh, when we were picking out samples, we made this little sampler guy with all the different uh, samples we were being offered. This is, and out of these samples, I think the only one we picked up that we didn't already carry was the, the jersey one. And so this is um, testing to see their iron on ability. We iron on like double sided interfacing so that you can make something like, like this. NES controller with capacitive touch sensing buttons and to yeah. see how it would react when you iron it on to fabric. And, and then I leave this out in the air also to see like how it oxidizes over time. Um, so conductive fabric is useful for making um, yeah. sensors. Yeah. yeah, you can make like a plush game controller or a game controller out of anything really that you can add fabric to. We iron, there's the interfacing and then um, iron on the button pads and then sew them to the flora. But you can also use it to make like a soft switch if you put a um, semi-permeable membrane in between two pieces of conductive fabric, like a piece of quilt batting with holes punched in it, that way when you squeeze it or you, you squeeze a pillow, yeah. you can trigger an action with like a completely soft sensor. Yeah, That's pretty cool. Um, it's not really good for like power delivery. It's mainly good for sensing switches, um, switches and, and capacitive touch sensing. So um, we are just going to show you a, a very short clip of the video on how to make this project, and you can check out the link for this project also in the description. It's easy to find your favorite classic game emulator online, and we've also provided a couple of the examples we used in the tutorial for this project, and all the links are in the description below. You can reprogram the Arduino to make these capacitive touch buttons print any keyboard button you'd like, so it's configurable to any game emulator you can find. It's also highly addictive and a whole lot of fun. Okay. So if you want to learn more, there's a whole like diagram and step-by-step -step for making your own plush game controller out of conductive fabric. And I'm also interested to hear what you have in your imagination to build with conductive fabric. You can ask questions about whether it's possible or share your ideas with others in the comments below. Yeah. Speaking of, if people have questions, you answer them. I answer them. <laughs> right. In the last segment of the show, we do Q&A, and we queue up your questions from all the way throughout the week. So if you have a question about wearable electronics, anything we showed here today, or anything else, post up in the comments. And if we feature your question on an upcoming live show, say next week maybe, uh, you will be entered to win our giveaway. And this week, we are giving away one of each of the three different kinds of conductive fabric that we sell. It's very relevant to the show. The giveaway is always relevant. Yeah. Although, if you post your question and you post a request, I'm not going to yeah. say that I'm not going to read that and think about what to make the giveaway. Yeah. But this week, it's conductive fabric, so you can make your own plush game controller. Um, yeah, we should answer the you, questions. And if you don't win, you can always buy the stuff in the Adafruit store and use the code LED ribbon for 10% off in the floor and wearable section. Until 11.59 tonight. Yeah. All right. First question is from Nicholas. Hi there, my daughter, seven, almost eight, is interested in building and inventing for a class project. Last year, we built an AM transmitter together. She also plays violin and recently got an electric violin. And I would love to build her something that could attach the violin and change color as she plays. Cool idea. Is this something like the floor is power? Is the floor powerful enough to handle that, or should I look for something else? I like the idea of Florida because it seems easy enough for her to do most of the work. That's right. Get her to do most of the work. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, yeah, Flora can handle that. You can do. Um, there's a thread in the forums right now about using the FFT library on Flora, and Phil B is uh, been chiming in on that a lot. Um, but yeah, the floor is powerful enough to do something like that. Um, right now, if you look at the project for the LED Amplitie, it's the volume meter necktie, it uses our microphone amplifier breakout. And um, the code then is measuring, is reacting based on volume. But if you also look at Phil B's Piccolo project on the learning system, there's, um, it's a frequency, um, there's some frequency analysis code in there, and, yeah. and you could have it. Um, but it sounds like you'd be happy with frequency or volume. And then you could either just place the thing in front of her amp or you could actually splice in the, um, the, the signal wire to the circuit. Yeah, as an alternative, we also have the Music Love project um, that Colin and I worked on. And you can go the other way. You can have music played based on a color. And that uses the flora. So you get all sorts of choices. Right. So the flora can do it. It depends on which sensor you want and uh, sure. cool stuff. Good yeah, idea, and, it, and it, at seven, almost eight, um, even with the flora and alligator clips, she's still going to need your help to build that project. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe okay. a little. All right, next up, next question. 
Has there been no luck finding conductive thread that you can run through a sewing machine? Oh, Sally. Yes, you can, you can put it in your sewing machine, but I recommend the two-ply conductive thread and put it in the bobbin. So it comes already on a bobbin. Put it in the bobbin side of your sewing machine and um, because it's a little too thick to go through all of the different passes that the needle thread has to go through and it could jam or, or bind. Um, and then um, you could also, if you want to sew a thicker thread down, you can um, zigzag over it with plain thread, and that's how we get the big chunky power buses we needed for the um, Pixel Suspenders project you can check out. But yeah, put the two-ply in the bobbin. Okay. Next up. How long will this last, and is it all possible to get music from headphones and generate light when there is a bass? Oh, he's asking about the headphones project from last week. Uh -huh. The battery that it uses, the little 150 milliamp hour, tiny, tiny lithium polymer battery, it'll last like a couple hours. It's powering, um, you know, 14 NeoPixels mm -hmm. and not doing a whole lot else. So a couple hours would be fine yeah. on a recharge. And then um, if you want to mod it to light up when there's bass, it's kind of similar to the um, violin daughter question. You check out Philby's Piccolo code. You can run the FFT library on the Flora. Um, it just requires a little bit of a change up and um, his code will show you how to um, specify which frequencies you want your LEDs to react to. And if you chose, you could pick just the base. Yeah, and you also have a, a little example here, right? That you oh yeah, okay, so also on Wearable Wednesday this week, uh, Caitlin's dad on Instructables, who will forever be known as Caitlin's dad because yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have another name. Nope. He already made a uh, um, modification to our light-up headphones project where he used the NeoPixel ring and uh, the Amplitai code to make them volume reactive. So you mm. would look at Philby's Piccolo project because it does frequency reaction and the Amplitai does volume, um, but they're you know, still both reacting to the sound. Gotcha. Super cool. Okay, next uh, next question. These are all good questions. I'm 12. I'm wondering if you could do a project with earbuds. I would love to. I actually have some fabric. Thank you for the suggestion. And um, I actually have my earbuds have like a fabric co covered cord, which mm -hmm. is really cool. I could like stitch into it maybe and put yeah. like a NeoPixel on each one might be cool. It's a little yeah. tight because everything's so small, but like yeah. I think that look would be really cool. Yeah, I've seen like the he the uh, earbuds when they have like little diamond encrusted things. Yeah, on mine the have little like sparkly. Yeah. They're plastic, but sparkly sort of things. Yeah, that'd be pretty neat. Put the LED inside it. All right. Next up, is Adafruit going to make a board to connect Flora's RGB without sewing, like with wire? You can connect the. This was a comment on last week's show on when the product, um, what you call it, component was NeoPixels, Flora NeoPixels. Yeah. You can solder wires to Flora NeoPixels. In fact, you look at the headphone project we did last week, um, the heart rate monitoring project we soldered the NeoPixels. Yeah. So you can freeform wire the Adafruit NeoPixels. You can also use NeoPixel strip, which is all of them already in a row that you would connect with wires, um, because then there's so many that you wouldn't want to run that much power through conductive thread. And. Um, you can also, we also have NeoPixel 8x8 matrix that's coming out soon. NeoPixel rings are in the shop. Yeah. There's going to be a NeoPixel Arduino shield. NeoPixel everything. So yes, NeoPixels yeah. exist primarily in the traditional circuit world with wire. And yeah. then Flora NeoPixels are kind of a special thing that you can use either with wire or with conductive thread. Yeah, people are going crazy uh, making all sorts of stuff. Uh, Burning Man is coming up and Happening. It's partially happening now, right? Yeah, People are arriving now. Yeah, I've been getting the frantic emails. Becky, mm -hmm. where can I get things for Burning Man with <laughs> rush shipping? And I go, oh, Adafruit EL wire category is yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the shipping. Um, people are asking how fast they can get stuff. Um, to Black Rock City? To, yeah. <laughs> do you guys yeah. do overnight to Black Rock? Yeah, to a, to a, re a rest stop. Maybe yeah. make sure we should. Yeah, a little Adafruit <laughs> pop-up store right on the, the, stop, the stop there. Uh, next up. Next question. So, how many NeoPixels can you drive at one time? Several hundred, but you have to worry about powering them then. So, the signal is several hundred, and basically until you run out of RAM. So, I guess it depends on what else you're doing on your um, microcontroller. But if you're just driving NeoPixels, several hundred, and um, then you would have to, if you're using battery power, you need to like splice in extra lithium polymer batteries, like yeah. at the um, different spots in the circuit, so that they all can share the current load because like several hundred NeoPixels is a lot of current. Somebody mm. did the calculation in the forums where 440 NeoPixels is 26 amps. That's a lot. So like you'd even need more than one like AC adapter yeah. to splice into it. But the um, hardware to address them and like to you know send information to them is not a problem. Yeah. Traditionally that used to be the issue. Yeah. How can you Right, because the chips weren't big enough with enough space on them yeah. to handle all. Yeah. So. And also we use a one wire protocol so you don't need to have a wire going to each one. 
and I've seen wearables where you've had to do that, and eventually you're just inside of a cage because it's just all wire everywhere. Yeah. So, right. Um, so yeah, NeoPixel is the way to go. It's just a power delivery concern. All right. Well, before we do the giveaway, that was the last question, really. That was the last question. Oh, okay. You got through those really, really fast. That was great. Mm -hmm. um, before we do the last question, the code of the week, code of the day, is LED ribbon. LED ribbon gets you 10% off in the aid restore in the floor and wearables category. Okay, well, we can do the giveaway drawing, and then I have a top secret thing to show, too. Okay, yeah. Wow. That's intense. Intense. Okay, so yeah. look, it's totally random. I thought about maybe putting this in the shoe, but then I was like, oh, no, it's unfair. Someone's thing will get stuck in the toe of the shoe. Yeah, okay. And All I just right. printed out the comments and cut them up and put them in this, in this bin. Okay, commenter from YouTube from last week whose username is IIJIO. I know that guy. That's great. <laughs> I know that guy. Um, who commented on last week's show, uh, which hopefully means that he or she is watching again live, is Adafruit, who said, is Adafruit going to make a board to connect floors RGB without sewing, like with wire? Yeah. You have won three different types of conductive fabric. I will try to get in touch with you, but if you're watching right now, you can send an email to support at Adafruit.com to claim right. your prize. That's a, nice, that's a nice little prize pack. Mm -hmm. I'd I'll like to win conductive thread off the internet. Here, <laughs> you have won some conductive well, fabric on the internet. It's okay. I have a whole bin of it over it's there. It's more fun if you win it, though. It's like, you can buy those little <laughs> stuffed animals, but it's fun to go to the carnival. Because you want, and then it's yeah. a symbol of your success instead yeah. of a symbol of your consumerism or whatever. Yeah, yeah so. sure. All right, what's this top secret thing? Uh, I have, have a top secret thing to show because like, we have like, like two left. minutes. Yeah, yeah, a minute left. Uh, it's next week's project. Oh, wow. But the code's not ready yet, so I'm just yeah. going to show you. It's a, um, a little demo. So it's a shoe. I, I swear there's another one. Okay. Um, with a NeoPixel strip around the bottom here, and then the wire comes over and there's a flora, and then inside the heel is a, um, I don't think I can pull it out, but there's a piece of Velostat in there, which, oh, I don't know if it's gonna be next week's material spotlight or not. Yeah. And then when you push down, I don't know if I can get it to trigger up in the air like this, yeah, but it's pretty hard when to, you yeah. press on it, because you're stepping, because when you walk, I can totally put 100 pounds of pressure on it with my arms. Maybe you it? have to try it. Yeah, I can do I can it on the table. It. So what do I want to do? Squeeze as hard as yeah, I can? Yeah, there you go. You did it. Yeah. So the code, the animation code is not ready yet, but um, this is next week's project are these rad LED firewalker shoes that Phil B came up with. Look at that. That's nice, right? So the Velostat's really simple and cheap. I don't want to tell you too much about it because it's a special top secret project. But, but yeah, it's a really simple, cheap sensor to trigger like when you walk. And I think they look really fun. This is awesome. I'm just going to do this for the rest of the day. <laughs> That's your super top secret. If you guys. And you then need to find me. I'm in the corner doing this. If you want to do a what am I wearing, this is the, our, our LED oh, yeah. sewing kit hair bow that you can learn how to make also on the Adafruit Learning System and with our LED sewing kit. So, what you know, cool project. wearable electronics all over the place. Yeah, these are coming out really nice. I like the way the flora looks on those shoes. Yeah. And these are Vans. This week we went after Adidas, and next week we'll go after Vans. And yeah. maybe we can have John come on and, and talk about Oh My God Shoes. Yeah. What's the other ones? Ruse yeah. with the little <laughs> with the little zipper. They have ruse. a little pocket on them. Yeah. yeah, this is great. I wish the we could have done ruse because you could put like the battery pack in the f pocket or whatever. But yeah. um, Phil B made uh, and hopefully we'll get him some, to put some pictures up of his pair too for the tutorial next week. He used the the Adidas winged sneakers, kind of like the winged ballet flats, uh, okay. and put the battery pack like on the back of the shoe there. Yeah. We're putting it in the laces. You got it now. Yeah, I'm really strong. No, I mean like I am. I know. Like I wish I wasn't. Like it's like break stuff every time I touch it. I always have to say I always have yeah. to yeah ask people it's to terrible. open things for me. Terrible. Anyway, so look, check back in uh, next week on Wednesday at two, and we'll be debuting that project video live yeah. right here before it goes live on YouTube. So you know. This is cool. I had Vans when I was a skateboarder. This is awesome. I made you a pair. This is so cool. All right. I'm Maybe we can down. both wear them next next uh, week on the show. Yeah. We'll have to do this the whole time? Yeah. Well, we'll have a shoe cam. I'll put it underneath oh, the table. Oh, yeah. Shoe I'll, put it, yeah. <laughs> I'll put it underneath the table. <laughs> Can it be in the lower? Okay. Yeah. It'll yeah. Be the shoe cam. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. We'll be back here next week, same time. The code is LED Ribbon to get 10% off in the Adafruit Store wearables and floor categories until 11.59 p.m. tonight. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.